becoming active, and they're communicating with the native soil microbes. They're beginning to talk because microbes actually have a communication that's different than ours. And what they're doing is they're starting to, each microbe has their own language, if you would. And as the indigenous microbes speak with the native microbes that live here, they begin to talk about what's happening and what's been happening to the area. <coughs> they begin to go to school, if you will, so that they know what pathogens live here. Who are the bad guys? How do they colonize? How do they work? How is the best way to clean up the bad pathogens in the area? So as they begin to talk, they share this information on the best way to get the job done. They, they'll tell each other what microbes are the soil builders. This is the weird communication of the microbes. So, at this point, it looks pretty good. So now we can throw, by taking the ball, and put it into one, into the hand like this, and squeeze it each time, the mud gets tighter and tighter. You want the mud nice and tight, because once it dries, when you put it in the water, it's going to dissolve up like a time capsule. So we need the mud nice and hard. As the microbes get released into the water, their food source is going to become pollution. They love to eat oils. All the petrochemicals in the water is their food source. They love all the nitrogens from the vineyard. They will convert that. They love all the ammunition that was dumped in the Vallejo Bay. It's sitting there at the bottom. Been there for over 50 years. That's their food source. Mostly anything that kills life form is going to be a food source to these indigenous microbes. As they begin to eat a lot of these pollutants, they'll return it back to the environment as beneficials for other aquatic life. We began doing this with Mount George Elementary, and we started on Earth Day putting the bocacci balls in the water, and we're unsure of how we were doing. And in December, the news crew was down in the Vallejo Bay because they were digging in some pylons, and they found some baby oysters. And they haven't found baby oysters in the bay in over 50 years. So they had to stop the digging, call into biologists, and find out well, what's happening? Where are these babies coming from? What's going on? Well, the biologists went around and did some testing and they tracked and they decided that the growth pattern of the baby oysters pointed right towards the Napa River, meaning that the food source of the Napa River, the cleaning of the Napa River, is starting to happen. And these oysters are an indicator species that the water's cleaning up. It's like if we dig in the dirt and we don't find worms, you know the microbial life's low in that part of the earth. Same thing with the water. We go in the water and we don't find oysters. Something's wrong. And it's usually at the microscopic level. And then it works its way up. Well, now we know there's oysters back in that bay. And we know that bay is full of ammunition dumps. It actually caught on fire at one time. There was so much pollution in that water from the shipyards, it combusted and it stayed on fire for several days. So a lot of pollution's in there. That's now a food source for the indigenous microbes. And they're cleaning up. And then last week I heard on a high tide down in the Golden Gate Bridge, you can now count over 200 dolphins every high tide coming in. You couldn't do this before. So the ecosystem's telling us that our activities collectively are paying off. The animals are returning. The species are returning. So a lot of times we try to go in and we plant native plants to try to build up an area, but we actually got to think smaller. The native plants need a support system, which is the microbial. So the smaller we begin to think, the bigger changes we begin to make. And everything we'll find out evolves around these little tiny microbes. When this planet was just the rock and water, it was the microbe that came out of the water and started to chew up the rock and started to make it into dirt, which then led to successions of plants. And then plants started to lead to bigger tree life. And all of this evolved because of the engineering of the microbials. We forgot all about them. We only use them now pretty much for food, you know? But as we remember what their work is here on the planet, we can put them back in. They can begin to reteach the microbes that already live here, the ones that have gone down in hiding. Because if they don't go down in hiding, they'll be killed by all of the vineyards and all of the pollution that we have and acid rains. They have to go down. But once they hear the indigenous guys out here making their noise, they begin to come back up and they begin to work together.
Now, this technology was used in Costa Rica, and after 15 years of using it every week on the same plantation fields, some of the people said, decided, well, we're going to test your soil, and I bet these 16 microbes in here are probably are going to be everywhere, and we're going to find high levels of these microbials because that's all you keep putting in. And it makes sense. When they took in the soil and they tested it, we can hardly find these starter cultures. And it surprised a lot of us. We wondered, well, where did they go? But what happened is they did not want to dominate. They just wanted to teach those who already live here, the microbes that already live here, those are the ones that replenished. Those are the ones doing the work. These guys just kind of went off, or they became a food source for the more native microbes that are already established. It never wants to come in and take over nothing. It only wants to build up what's already there. It only wants to call out what's waiting to be called and ready to be ready to do its work. So the, the focaccia balls have been used uh, for a long time, and let's get started on rolling these things up. We're going to see if we can do a thousand.